Hi there, how's it going? So, probably sick of this by now, me going, oh, it's my favorite one ever, but sorry, tough luck. This is my favorite one so far. So, what you see behind me are a bunch of derelicts in waiting. We've got a 58 Rolls Series 1 Cloud. That's going to be fun, piss off the purists. We've got a 51 Merc 2 door. We've got a 48 Pontiac uh, Torpedo Streamline Coupe. And we got a 46 Oldsmobile Streamline Coupe. And then, well, there's some more back there, but they're not derelicts. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, the car today that we're going to talk about and show off is a 1950 Buick Roadmaster Convertible. Super rare car. This car was found in Arizona. Sun baked rotten in a backyard, but what was cool about it was all original. But somebody had removed the engine uh, for rebuild effort many years ago. And the story I was told is that the machinist went out of business and took the guy's motor with him and the tranny and all the underhood parts, the carb, everything. So that kind of uh, liberated me from any unnecessary guilt when it came to doing what we do here at Icon. So this, uh, as you'll see as we go through the video, pretty obviously is built in the derelict style. And this car had a really cool patina color range and like kind of orange, brown, dark blue funk to it, which really was fun uh, when it came to interior materials and choices. So let's take it out to the park, go for a little ride, and uh, I'll tell you all about it. It's a fun one. It's super quick. We're doing uh, a more professional, or actually a professional video on this car, but uh, since I always do these, I just wanted to do it in my own, uh, let's call it organic style. Let's, let's start at the beginning of the story. Um, client was sentimental about this particular year and model. I think there was some family history with it. And uh, he's a repeat client. We built a couple different icon for, and he said, all right, I want to do it. Let's go. I said, all right. So we focused in on this exact model. And uh, as always, I sicked my hunters on it. So basically, I've got people around the country that are friends and fans of the brand. Uh, and when we're looking for a particular car, I send out the APB email. Then that says, all right, here's what we're looking for. We're gonna build it as a derelict or a reformer or what have you. And then we make sure that uh, we canvas the earth to find the right car. It actually took about eight months to find this car. Um, and on the way to finding this car, we stumbled into that 48 Buick Super Convertible that I did recently. That wasn't what this client wanted, but I took one look at it and fell in love. So I bought it, fortunately, client fell in love with it as well, so we built it for him. So once we found the car, first step was to get it back to the shop. Second step, we take the body, liberate it from the original frame, and then we scanned the underside of the car so that we'd have a 3D digital footprint of the body shape as it relates to the powertrain and chassis mods. Then we called up our rock star engineering friends at Art Morrison Enterprises, and we worked with their lead engineer to design a chassis that would non-invasively index to the stock body mounts. We did add a couple extra body mounts though to get rid of the cowl shake and some of the lack of structural rigidity that these original cars have. Man, I'm happy with this chassis. We did uh, independent front, we did four link rear, we're running Johnny joints instead of Himes, we have a tunable sway bar in the back no sway bar in the front, didn't need it. And then GM helped us out and got us the LS7 CAD file. And then we ran the LS7 to the Supermatic 4L85D automatic and modeled everything first, including the gas tank, which I modeled. Uh, with the gas tanks, we like to use um, the factory GM in-tank fuel pumps, sumps, filters, uh, they're just more reliable, they're quieter, they're longer lasting, and it keeps more continuity, you know, easier to service. Um, the tank is all hand built and stainless, it's all TIG welded and baffled, and then uh, we use this cool uh, vapor recovery system from our friends 
uh, at Vaporworks. So it just makes it a little bit more emissions responsible without adding any service issue peripheral crap. The other cool thing is the gas cap and fill neck. If you take an original 50 Buick or pretty much any car from this era and try and fill it at a gas station with modern pump rates, it's a disaster. You're like click, click, click. It takes forever. So we redesigned the fill neck to tolerate that higher flow rate and we also at the same time converted it to a seal cap. So it's not venting and outgassing uh, fumes into the environment. And again, it's, it's, it's a simple thing, but I think it makes a big difference in uh, the build quality and it's, it's just more conscious. So whatever, you know, you gotta do everything you can to be conscious when you're running a seven liter LS7, like for, what is this thing? I think about 560 horse is what the dyno mapped it at. For the wheels, uh, again, we worked with our friends at Circle Racing and we CNC'd uh, 18 inch wheels out of 6061 billet. And then we had those finished in this powder coat finish that we also used on interior trim and dash. Another thing we really had fun with on this car were the hubcaps. So they're spun stainless, but they're purposefully pretty crappy spun stainless. That way, when we created the vector file by replicating the original Buick font from the stock hubcaps, we acid etched those into the crap stainless. Being crap stainless, it created some actual corrosion. So then we filled it with black paint with uh, some iron oxide dust in it, and then hit it with a torch and clear coated it. It came out pretty cool. The interior finish on this, the paint was just too far gone and constantly chalky and leaving residue. So we decided to get rid of that and make it a little bit nicer on the inside. We're running uh, BF Goodrich G-Force tires, my favorite performance tire, CR rated. For brakes, we're running the Willwood six pistons in the front, four piston rear, T40-41 two-piece hats, then it's slotted. Uh, we're running Hydro Boost for brake pressure. That's something I've just been a recent convert to. We've been doing that for last couple of builds and I, I really like it. I like the pedal feel. It works out really nice. For the steering column, I ran the I Did It column and we machined the hub so that it would receive the stock steering wheel, which is key. I hate it when you see some ugly modern steering wheel in a classic. It just sucks. Gauges on this car look all original, and they are the original faces, indices, needles, graphics. On the back side though, it's all VDO electronics, so circuit board driven, more reliable and precise than the original movements ever were. The clock's been converted to quartz, and obviously all of it has been converted to 12 volt. Our electrical engineer hand built our harnesses in-house, so we're using all triple seal connectors, uh, a busman, military spec fuse panel, all cross-link wire, and then all military grade wraps, and three in each ring. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, stock radio, we gutted it, so again it looks stock, but it freed up a huge area behind the dash, which allowed us to modify the stock center dash. Buicks are really cool for dash design for what we do in that they have this monstrous center panel situation that houses your primary switches and knobs and stuff and your ashtrays, your radio, but the bulk of the square footage is dedicated to the speaker grill for the old AM radio. So what we like to do is scan those, and in this case, it was laser cut so that we could create an articulating door which is on gas shocks. Funny story, the gas shocks we actually steal from the remote control car world. So what's cool about them is you can change the gas pressure in them, thereby changing the rate of speed when the door articulates. But basically what we did is you tap it, it articulates down, and then there's a CNC blocking charging dock for an iPhone 6 Plus. I think it's kind of asinine size for a phone, but for an in-dash dock, perfect. That's complemented by Audison's Bit1 digital audio interface. So that gives you a traditional rotary knob for controlling your system volume as well as fine-tuning all your levels. Speakers are all 
high-end focal audio. The base is hidden in the trunk behind a false firewall. Or I guess not firewall, trunk wall. The front speakers are hidden behind the perforated leather. And then the rear speakers we repurposed 1960s Mercedes Gullwing speaker panels and then wrap those in the leather. The leather on this car is super cool. We actually selected two different hides. One of the hides is uh, stamped to look like wild boar, but it's really just top grain cowhide. But it's all hand patina, nanoline dyed, so really nice. The other hide, this, this less funky one on the top, is out of Italy and it's super soft, kind of has a waxy feel to it. Both of these hides come from our good friends at Moore and Shields. Uh, become one of my favorite leather companies to play with. For carpet on this car, I ran the vintage German Hoggarten Square Vive. It's very nice. Kind of traditional in German cars, not for American, but I thought it worked really well with the aesthetic of this one. Let's see what else. The top, although it's literally been up, I think, once since we built the car, is all Mercedes chocolate brown uh, hearts canvas. Windows are all powered. The original windows in the car were also powered, but they were hydraulic, so we've converted those to modern electric windows. For the control switches, we used a later model Buick power window switch system, which allows us to have the four gang switch on the driver's side because this car originally only had a single switch on each door, which is kind of a pain in the ass to do the octopus reach to get all the way around the car. on this car was really another fun opportunity. So you may have seen on a couple of our builds like on our Broncos that we use architectural glass. Well the neat thing about architectural glass other than it being a pain in the ass to work with and then you have to temper it after you cut it so that it's safe for automotive app is it's a whole new palette creatively so you can get into reflective values, satin values, as well as different color groups. So like the glass on this one, since the car has this kind of warm cigar chocolatey brown vibe going on, that's what we did with the glass. So the glass has this cool medium brown tint that to me just kind of adds to the character of the car. But, uh, it's really subtle, so you have to really be searching to notice it at first. But it just kind of adds to the overall charm of the car. So we did leave the power seat and the power top with the original hydraulic system. So that's been converted to 12 volt and stainless steel sleeved and uh, all done with proper rubber and full overhaul. But it's the stock design because it worked great. <laughs> funny like uh, we actually did a rally in this car last weekend for boys and girls club in Santa Barbara and the tires won't even be squealing the biggest performance limiter as is often the case with the derelicts is your ass because in the bench seat you're like sliding around holding on for dear life off to the passenger side and back again but the suspension engineering and chassis and tires and just the overall grip is just phenomenal on these cars. I don't know, I, I think of all the weird stuff I build, I definitely seem to get repeatedly the biggest kick out of the derricks. Just They make people smile too, there's never like attitude or judgment, like they, they don't scream that they're expensive, that, that's not what it's all about. They just have a certain character and they're either invisible or people totally dig it and get it. So a lot of people say that we fake our patina and we just plain don't. That's actually part of the fun with these cars is 
finding a car that nature has done a perfect job with that has the right amount of patina but is not a crusty bugger. So this car really had no rut, no rust, really nice shape. You notice those uh, four portals in the hood and uh, this particular car has some decorative covers in there that are early aftermarket pieces, a couple of which are broken or missing. We asked the client if he wanted us to restore them and he said, no, nope, it's part of the charm. And I couldn't agree more. So this patina is 100% original. This is 65 years of nature doing her art and we did nothing to alter it. Uh, the only place on the car where we did any fake patina work is in the engine bay, which we'll move on to here shortly. All the trim and bright work on the car is also original and in very nice shape. This is uh, right before the Korean War, so the quality of the stainless and steel trim is quite nice. And there's plenty of scuffs, dents, and bruises, but again, part of the charm, part of the character that makes a derelict unique, so we didn't really screw with any of it. For the top, we fabbed this leather boot uh, with British 10X snaps, which work out really nice, and we hemmed that in the wild boar textile. Steering wheel, as I mentioned, is stock, but we did uh, wrap it in that bore and hand stitch it. Uh, door panels, we stayed to the stock design. The armrest as well is dead stock. Obviously, the leathers are custom and the power windows, as discussed. Here you see the power seat controller and the seat in all its glory. Tempur-Pedic foam stuffing the seat, really quite comfortable. So let's talk about the engine bay. My client took one look at the 48 Buick that we had finished recently with the LS9 and we had made an effort to dress up that motor. So he wanted the same thing done here but of course in a different way. So these really cool CNC valve covers that still allow you to run the factory wires and coil packs and we lifted the fireball font from the straight 8 and then had that hand painted and patinaed. We funneled the intake through this large plenum up to the front of the car for a good cold air intake point and also to try and hide uh, the modernness in the engine bay. On top of the ugly plastic LS intake, you have this 442 vintage Oldsmobile air cleaner, which we modified and extended and then again did custom graphics inspired by the original car painted by the wonderful Tim Leventry, sign painter Major. So a freeway on ramps about the only place you can safely launch this bugger, so let's do it. I thank you again for watching my video. Icon4x4.com. Take care.